Hi everyone. My name is Ashley Starch. I'm a registered dietitian and certified diabetes educator at Connemaw Hospital. And today, for February's Lunch and Learn, we're going to be talking about a common problem that we're facing, something called portion distortion. So I'm glad you'll be joining me today to learn a little bit more about this topic. Thank you again for joining me for today's Lunch and Learn. Today, we're going to take a closer look at a popular topic called portion distortion. We want you to be able to state the difference between portion size and serving size. And we also want to give you the chance to apply your ability to estimate the calorie content of some different foods that we commonly consume today. So why are we picking on portions? In general, our large portions are what's contributing to our excess calorie intake. All those extra calories chalk up to some extra weight gain on the scale. And all of these extra calories and this weight gain is contributing to the obesity epidemic and our increased rates of developing prediabetes and type 2 diabetes. And our most recent analysis from the CDC indicates that if current trends continue, by the year of 2030, one in three people are predicted to have diabetes. One in 10 currently have diabetes. One in three have prediabetes. So what is the obesity epidemic? What does that actually mean? The obesity epidemic is a term that refers just to the growing amount of people or the growing number of people globally who are overweight or obese and often have other medical conditions such as a chronic disease, disability, but the rate at which obesity is increasing is the scary part. Currently, more than 1 billion adults and 22 million children under the age of five are considered obese. These trends are expected to continue. And again, looking at our most recent um, predictions from the CDC, by the year of 2030, half of the U.S. population will be considered obese, and a quarter of the U.S. population will be considered severely obese. So what's leading to all this extra weight gain and contributing to the obesity epidemic? Really, it has to do with the food we're eating and our physical activity level. Um, portion size definitely coincides with the increasing prevalence of obesity. In the United States, over the past three decades, the increased calorie intake was largely driven by a combination of two things, not only portion size, but increased eating frequency. So we know there is a relationship between portion size and obesity, but it's a complex relationship that we definitely need to explore more about. When we look at prediabetes in relation to obesity, we know that being overweight or obese increases the risk of developing prediabetes greatly. Being physically inactive on most days of the week also increases risk. Our genetics put us at risk. Our age puts us at risk. So we know that certain of these risk factors are modifiable, being overweight, being physically inactive. So those are the things that are in our control that we want to try to take a hold of before prediabetes develops and before type 2 diabetes develops as well. Because currently, you'll see that 30 million Americans have diabetes. That's about one in every 10 people. Again, if those trends continue by 2030, one in three people will have diabetes. We know that having diabetes can be managed, you know, by testing your blood sugar regularly, eating healthy foods, achieving a healthy body weight. So diabetes is expected to increase in frequency, but we know that we can still live a healthy lifestyle even with a diagnosis of diabetes. Again, we need to focus on what we're eating, how much we're eating, and how often we're eating. When we take a look at portion sizes, what does a portion size actually mean? What a portion size is defined as is that it is the amount of food that is placed on your plate. It reflects the amount you choose to eat at any one given time. Everyone's portion sizes are different. The next time you're in a restaurant, if it's a buffet, take a look around at everyone's different portion sizes. My portion size is different than your portion size, and that's different than the person that's sitting beside you. So again, remember, portions can vary from person to person because it's the amount that you choose to eat. When we look at differentiating between a portion size and a serving size, a serving size is the amount of food that's recommended. That's what's listed on your nutrition facts label. It's set by the US Food and Drug Administration. It's more of a regulated amount. And when we look at serving sizes and how they're determined, we actually determine serving sizes that are on the nutrition facts label. What a serving size is, is the average amount that Americans consume in a single setting. So how do we figure that out? It's actually collected through federal food surveys. 
So as the years progress and as our portion sizes are increasing, we're going to see that reflected on the the amount of food that's listed on our food label in that spot. So the serving size allows food manufacturers to kind of keep things uniform, um, create a standard consistency across labels so that it's easy when you pick up two products, ice cream, for example. You'll see a serving size has recently been adjusted to two-thirds of a cup. Two-thirds of a cup is it's easy for comparison's sake. If you pick two products up, you can easily see that two-thirds of a cup of Ben & Jerry's ice cream compared to two-thirds of a cup of Edie's ice cream, we can compare calories in that. And it becomes a little bit easier because it's a uniform size. So as you can probably guess, portion sizes may or may not be less than a serving size. So they could be more, they could be less, but you're the one that's choosing. However, the serving size must be based on how much food people actually consume, not on what they should eat. And again, your portion size may or may not match the serving size. We hope that it does, but unfortunately for most of our population, your portion size is a lot bigger than the recommended serving size. So as a result of all these increasing portion sizes over the past few years, there have been updates to our food labels to better reflect this. So the label was actually updated in May of 2016. You may notice now that some serving sizes on food labels may be larger or they may be smaller than what they had been before. So an easy one to look at for an example is soda. So it used to be that soda was in a 12-ounce bottle. We're now seeing a 20-ounce or even a 24-ounce bottle. When we look at the label, it's now going to apply to that whole bottle. Instead of having a 20-ounce bottle broken into two servings, one bottle is going to be the serving size. Again, because that's what we're generally consuming, as well as uh, the ice cream, as we had mentioned before. Our food labels have gotten a facelift recently. And you'll see there for comparison's sake, our current label, which is now kind of the old label, you're going to be seeing a new label um, on most of the food products if you haven't been noticing that already. And the big difference is what is emphasized on the food label. So on the right hand side there, you'll see with the new label, really number one and number two, the serving size is big, it's in bold print, so it's easier for you to see. The calories are going to be the largest thing that's on that label because that's what we want you to pay the most attention to. It makes it a lot easier at a quick glance to locate the nutrients that are in your foods for comparison's sake so that you can hopefully better equip you to make a healthier choice. So we all have a different idea of what a portion should be. Your portion may be bigger than mine. My portion may be bigger than yours. So even though that portion size varies, there is one thing that is very consistent between all of us. We're really bad estimators of the amount of food that we eat. There's a lot of research that's been done up until this point, basically looking at portion size, serving size. Why do we eat the portion sizes that we eat? What drives us to eat a larger size? What affects how much we put on our plate? So below you'll see there are a couple different things that affect what we choose to put on our plate. So we know that when we put more on our plate or when we're presented more, we eat more. We know that we eat mindlessly. It doesn't always matter how good or how bad that the food tastes. We really just eat it in a great volume when it's presented to us. Whenever we eat more at one meal, we tend to say that we will eat less at the next. That by all means is not true. Um, we never really adjust for that. So this has been studied in great detail and we know that whenever we eat a large meal and say that we'll adjust at the following meal, that actually never happens and again contributes to those excess calories. We know that portion size is in influenced by what we're expecting to get out of the food. And we also know that the lighting and visual cues play in, an important part in our portion size regulation. So what actually is portion distortion? The formal definition of that is that it is the consumption of large oversized portions that we perceive as being normal. So over the years, what we are seeing has become distorted in the sense of what is normal. This is probably one of the best examples of that. This is a really uh, an old graphic, but it's a really powerful one. So what we're seeing on the left is what we're actually served. It's a pretty typical American meal. We have our cheeseburger, we got fries, 
And we also see on the right hand side what's in what one serving actually is. So on the left is what we get, on the right is what we should be eating. You'll see there's a really big difference in there in terms of calories and fat. So it's easy to see what, where we're getting these extra calories from and why our obesity rates continue to increase. So now we're going to take a minute and kind of just test what you know or test your guesstimation ability to see, at, uh, to see some of our common foods that are out there today and to guess how many calories are in those foods. So looking first at pepperoni pizza, it's definitely a favorite, something I hear on a daily basis that people eat. So 20 years ago, two slices of pepperoni pizza had roughly about 500 calories. Today, we're looking at about 850 calories in two slices of pizza. When we look at coffee, 20 years ago, coffee was pretty standard. An eight ounce glass or an eight ounce mug of coffee, maybe with a little bit of whole milk, half and half or cream, a little bit of sugar, roughly would give us about 45 calories. Today, in the wonderful world of Starbucks, whenever we look at some of these fancier drinks or spe specialty drinks, um, there's a big calorie difference. We're looking at over 500 calories difference. So every day on the way to work, if you're stopping at s stopping somewhere and getting one of those specialty drinks, you could be racking up easily an extra 500 calories. That's going to add up pretty quickly on, on the scale in terms of weight. When we look at desserts, 20 years ago, a three ounce piece of cheesecake was considered a, a fairly common portion size there for about 260 calories. Whereas today, seven ounces and as you can suspect, about double the amount of calories with that as well. Another favorite, cheeseburgers. 20 years ago, it was a pretty plain Jane cheeseburger, about 333 calories, standard burger with cheese, maybe a few condiments on there. Today, we're looking at a double cheeseburger with bacon, over a thousand calories. That's a really big difference there. Not to mention that we have so many options. We have um, a Baconator. We have a son of a Baconator. We have all of these different options and things that are advertised. Whoppers, Whopper Juniors, Big Macs, all of these burgers that continue to stack a higher amount of food in between that bun, where in terms of the higher amount of food, that's going to only equate to a higher amount of calories that we're eating. Soda we had looked at briefly before on the nutrition label that 20 years ago, um, it would give us about 80 calories, only a six and a half ounce bottle. Today, we're looking at a 20 to 24 ounce bottle, and that's giving us about 270 calories. And as you probably can guess, calories are really easy to drink. So it's something that we can, we mindlessly increase throughout the day, and it doesn't feel like we're getting a lot to eat, but the calories are adding up. So be careful with the beverages that you choose and give those a little bit more thought because even a simple change of swapping out a soda once or twice a day can really decrease the weight on the scale for you. When we look at bagels 20 years ago, they were about three inches, 140 calories. Today, they doubled in size and they're also doubling in calories as well. And this doesn't even include what we're putting on them. If it's a, a flavored cream cheese or if it's a loaded with extra butter. So most bagels are actually higher than that amount of calories because of the condiments we're putting on them. Popcorn 20 years ago was only five cups. Still a lot of popcorn, about 270 calories. Whereas today we have the the endless or bottomless popcorn tub, it's about 11 cups, you can go back for a refill, and you're looking at well over 600 calories for that. French fries that come with those burgers, 20 years ago about 200 calories, today over 600 calories. If we look at a standard turkey sandwich, 20 years ago, if you ordered a turkey sandwich, you would get about 300 calories. Your sandwich would be on two slices of bread, whereas today we're getting a full, in most cases, foot-long sub. Um, this here is only about a six-inch sub, but again, about 800 calories are coming packed in that sub. Really, you know, as, as we look back at those portion sizes that we just went over and the changes that have happened over the years, it's easy to see that the sizes are increasing, but we always aren't fully aware that it's happening. We kind of just go with the flow. We eat what's served to us. So really, education is the biggest part of this whole battling this obesity epidemic and trying to decrease our increasing rates of type 2 diabetes and prediabetes. So we really need to work on controlling those portion sizes. There's a lot that goes in to portion sizes, and there's a lot that affects what we eat. It's the predisposition and our knowledge prior to eating, um, what's, what we're expecting, what we've been taught. Those are all important in terms of when we make our choice. 
we know that planning, especially pre-meal planning, has been really helpful and can be one of the most powerful predictors of the amount we consume. Because if we plan it ahead, we're more likely to stick with it. Whereas if it's something that we're grabbing on the go, we tend to make a less healthy decision and we tend to eat more of it. And there is always the commonly accepted norm that we should always clear our plates. And that we we really need to try to break that because we don't always have to clear our plates. We need to realize when we're full and learn to recognize that again. And keep in mind, if anything else from today, keep in mind that small changes can equal big successes. So when we talk about changing lifestyle habits, we talk about decreasing portion sizes. We're talking about um, eating less, making healthier choices. All of that can be very overwhelming, especially if we've been doing it for years. Most people have been eating the way they've been eating for, you know, 50 years, 70 years, maybe at least a good 20. So it's hard to change those habits. But keep in mind that even really small changes can, can really lead to a big success. So 100 extra calories a day could actually turn into 10 pounds of weight gain in one year. 100 calories a day doesn't sound like a whole heck of a lot, but when we look over the course of a year, that adds up really, really quickly. So making small changes, maybe just drinking a little bit less soda, a couple sips less can make a, a big change. Maybe eating in, you know, instead of the sleeve of Oreo cookies, maybe eating one or two Oreo cookies. That makes a big difference because when we look at Oreo cookies, they actually are pretty darn high in calories. A way that you could save 100 extra calories is actually about one and a half Oreo cookies, not even a full two. Um, So even just eating a little bit less of those things can make a big difference. So I hope that you'll take a little bit of time and think about some things that you're eating or even just become more familiar with reading reading those food labels, Um, learning to recognize calorie intake and trying to make a habit of decreasing some of those extra calories because all of those little, little changes can make a big difference from year to year. There's a lot of research that also shows that a little bit of education can go a long way. So just 10 minutes of a training session related to portion control improved people's ability to be able to better estimate what they're eating. However, when they continued to study that, even though people were educated, it's the education stuck with them, but not for a really, really long time. So what that tells us is that it's a continual learning process. And the same with, you know, when we look at weighing and measuring our foods, when we talk about being a bad estimator of portion sizes, we always remind people to try to weigh or measure your foods out at least once a month to give yourself a recheck for this reason, because over time, the portions will continue to grow again. So keep re- remember to keep educating yourself as time goes on too. It's not just a one and done. And what we can do for ourselves, not only for ourselves, but also for the people that we care for, we use tools that are easy for you to implement. That's the biggest thing is that if we want a lifestyle change to be something that you can stick with, you need to do something that's realistic, something that can be easily implemented. My plate is a very easy concept that can be applied across age spectrum and really just focuses on getting more healthy choices and works to control those portion sizes. So trying to get a variety from each of the food groups and really trying to increase your fruits and vegetables. That will help you to eat healthier overall, but also we want you to try to be more active as well because we know that eating plays a big part in our weight and in the the risk of developing diabetes, but we also know that activity plays a pretty darn important part in that as well. Thank you for joining me today for February's Lunch and Learn. I hope that you're able to take away something related to portion control and that you'll be able to better improve some of your lifestyle habits. Thank you for your time.